Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of magneto work on the Caterpillar RD6 today. Um, namely, the old Eisman mag down here. This is the RC2Q, and this one's had a little bit of uh, trouble keeping up lately. I get a little bit of an intermittent pop or a misfire in the engine. So, Senior, in his spare time, rebuilt and reconditioned this one for me. And I love these old Eisman mags. They're just works of art in my opinion. They were certainly proud of their logo. You can see it, Eisman Magneto Corp on the advance up here. They've got it on this side as well. They've got it on the cap, RC2Q again, made in the United States of America. And they're proud of their little lightning bolts. Love these things. These were built back when manufacturers took pride in their product and they weren't afraid to show a little bit of style and class. Anyway, I'm gonna go through the procedure of removing and installing a magneto on one of these starting engines. Uh, you can see I've got this little cover kind of loose already. That's the first piece you're gonna want to take off. Just finish removing that. Next, we have this little cover down on the front of the mag. We want to take that off. These can kind of be a trick sometimes, so I help it out with a screwdriver. There we go. Next, I'll remove this little cotter pin from the Spark Advance linkage. Rotate that little rod up out of the way. Then spark plug wires come off. Um, for reference, the inside wire is for number one cylinder. Number one is the cylinder closest to the front of the machine. So we'll position that guy inside of the hand crank rod. And then number two is the outer one. We'll leave him hang outside of that rod. That's how we kind of keep them straight. And then disconnect the grounding wire from the mag switch. Now, before I start loosening the mag, I first need to align the timing marks of the engine. And Cat was kind enough to give us plenty to use. The scribe line on the gasket surface for that cover is the line to which you will basically position all the marks that are on the flywheel to. So we take note of where that is. Now if I can make this little GoPro focus in here, you can see we have that white arrow that I put on there with the paint pen that indicates the direction of flywheel rotation when the engine is running. And we have the scribe marks above it. Um, the very top scribe mark says TC number one. That indicates top dead center of number one cylinder. And you want to make sure you're on the compression stroke when you align that TC number one scribe line to the one out here on the cover. That's where I have the engine positioned right now. We are at top dead center, number one cylinder on the compression stroke. And just for your information, the scribe line below that indicates uh, exhaust valve closed on number one. You really don't need that, but it's there anyway. So now that we've found the timing marks for top dead center and exhaust closed on number one, I need to go up to the third mark, which says mag with its own scribe line. That's right up here in the light. I need to align that mag scribe line with the scribe line here on the housing before I loosen that magneto up. And because that mag line is well in advance of top dead center number one, where I have it now, I'm gonna have to turn this flywheel opposite of its normal direction of rotation to get this mark down. So what I'm gonna do, you can't see it, but I'm rolling the flywheel down. Okay, and our mag mark is well below right here. So that's a good thing because when you align these scribes, you always want to have the flywheel turning in its normal direction of rotation. That ensures the backlash in your timing gears is on the drive faces of all those gear teeth, and it's not, and ah, sorry, and that that is not going to uh, throw you off by just you know a couple degrees. It just gives you a much more accurate. Uh, time up that way. So as I creep this mag mark scribe line up to the line here, this little white mark on this gear out here on the mag should also come into register with the arrow right here on the housing where it says spark number one cylinder. Right there, just like that. So just to further verify, we know that our marks are in register with one another at the magneto. And we'll go in here and we'll just make sure that our mag scribe line right there is in register with the scribe line on the housing. That ensures a properly timed ignition system on one of these starting engines. So we'll leave starting engine position where it is and take the four bolts out here, remove the magneto. Final bolt is coming out. And the only thing you need to watch for it 
is to make sure you get this uh, slotted coupling out at the same time. That's how it's driven from the adapter that's on the starting engine. And as long as I'm into this, I've got the mag out of the way, so this is the perfect time to show you. The drive adapter that comes out of the starting engine here, it's a two-piece um, ring that has all of these little straight splines on the center hub that it could be positioned on. So a couple of uh, machine screws hold it in. You can loosen them, you know, top, bottom, whatever you need to do. And it just slides off like this. And you got all those teeth in there correspond with all these teeth out here. So to further fine tune your adjustment, you can position this whichever way you need to on that hub to get your um, cross slotted adapter piece lined up with your magneto once your marks are in register. So I'm not worried about retiming this because basically we're doing all this anyway. It's just part of the process I wanted to show you this little piece right here. This is where most of your fine adjustment comes into play. Now to install the new mag, first thing we need to do is get our timing marks in register up here. So we look at the impulse drive. The arrow shows us normal direction of rotation. So what I'll do is spin this around till I can see the mark coming up. Here we go. Let's see if I can position this where you can catch it all. So light in there, you can see the mark. So we creep it around until it lines up with the arrow on the housing right there. So we have our mag set up for spark on number one cylinder. Come down here, take our drive adapter that goes on the engine, and I'm just going to throw that on that hub, let it go way forward where the lugs are not going to interfere. Then position the new mag. One important thing that I want to note about the four bolts that hold the magneto to the mount is that you do not want to use bolts that are too long. Uh, the threaded portion of these bolts is right on one inch. In my world, that's about perfect. If you use bolts that are too long, they can go down through the threaded holes in the base and actually come into contact with the coil and destroy that coil. So that's something that you do not want to have happen. Another thing I want to mention here, I've got all the bolts started in the mag, but it's still loose. You can still float it around a bit. Uh, this is where I want to throw that slotted drive coupling in because once the magneto mount bolts are tight, it would not fit at that point. There we go. Now we tighten it all in. Now that I've got all four bolts tightened down for the mag, we'll just check our slotted coupling. It's still floating in there. That's good. It's not binding and we will reference our mag timing marks once again and as you can see that mark no longer lines up with the pointer which means I must have jarred that impulse a little bit when I put that slotted coupling in there and now the problem is now that it's upside down you cannot just turn that as freely as you could when it was right side up because those impulse dogs are now catching so that's preventing me from getting my timing mark fully lined up and this is actually kind of a good occurrence, kind of a positive thing, because I can show you how to overcome that. They give you this little access plug here to get in at those dogs to manually release them. So luckily I've still got the old mag that I took off of here just a minute ago, and I took the impulse cover off so you can see what I'm going to go in there and do. So we'll go in through this uh, plug hole right here, and we will access where these little coupling dogs are. And you can see that's what's grabbing on and preventing me from turning the coupling. So I'll take the pick in there and I will manually depress that finger and then that allows me to keep rotating the coupling around. Uh, it'll be impossible to see what I'm doing through there with the camera, but that's essentially what I'm trying to get at. And this mag also gives you a pretty good view of what I was mentioning just a minute ago about how if you've got bolts that are too long, they can go down through those holes because they are not blind holes, they are absolutely through, and go into your coil and ruin it. Again, that's just another visual, something to really be on the uh, lookout for. Okay, now that I've got the impulse coupling turned around to where all of my magneto timing marks line up, I've replaced that access plug. And now I can take this uh, drive adapter that's on the starting engine and mesh it into the slotted drive coupling. And you want to have 15 thousandths clearance between that adapter and that coupling, just enough so that that can float in there. Once you have the desired clearance, tighten down the two cap screws, and that makes that assembly permanent. And now we do one 
final check of all of the timing marks and uh, everything on the magneto is in register with each other. And we'll take a look in here. Mag mark and scribe line on the flywheel is in register with the scribe line on the housing. So we can put this cover back on and the little cover back on on the magneto as well. So as long as I was replacing covers off camera, this was such a simple uh, disassembly that I just uh, reinstalled the mag switch wire. I got the Spark Advance linkage hooked back up and put the plug wires back on. Pretty simple install here. Didn't think you needed to see all that. So it's all back together. I think it's time to test it out. So we got the gas on. We're going to try this mag out. So we do mag switch on. Now we have our little instruction tag here. You probably can't read it, but it says start cold engine with spark advanced, start warm engine with spark retarded. So we are cold engine. We'll give it a pretty decent amount of advance. I trust the timing marks. I doubt it's gonna kick back on me. Um, this engine always likes to start off the idling latch. So that is idle, that's off the latch. That's where this one always likes to start. I'll give it a little bit of choke and we'll see what happens. Got to pop. Take it off, choke. Egg switch works as well, so I'm going to consider that a, a success. Um, like I said, when we're running off the idling latch at full at full speed, um, you want some advance in your spark because your engine's going faster. And this one, once it got started on just about full advance, I kicked it back just about to mid range, and that's where it seemed like it wanted to run at um, at full throttle. Then when I went and re-engaged the latch, closed that throttle plate. I then retarded the spark just about all the way and it idled down. You could hear the cylinders hitting pop, 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 pretty darn even. So all in all, I'm very happy with that. And we also tested the mag switch. When I flipped it to off, it grounded the mag, uh, grounded the mag, sorry, cut the spark and it shut off. Um, you don't want to shut these off like this all the time. Uh, as you know, you always want to shut the gas off and let it burn out of the carb because it's a downdraft system. If you leave gas in the carb, it can find its way to the crankcase, dilute your oil gives you all kinds of problems. So I'll start this back up in a minute and we'll shut the gas off right now actually and we'll burn the rest out of that car before we put it away. But this has been removing and installing a magneto on Caterpillar RD6 starting engine and I think I'm going to wrap the video right here. Thanks for watching guys.